Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter number 8. I, Lord willing, uh, I plan to finish that chapter this morning. I've lost track. I think we've been in this chapter maybe five or six weeks or close to two months. Uh, Romans 8 is the heart of the chapter. Uh, every doctrine that we believe is mentioned in the book of Romans chapter 8. Well, the Holy Spirit is mentioned about 20 times in Romans chapter 8. And remember the Lord said, I'll pray the Father and he shall send you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. So uh, he is our ever present help. Uh, I remind you, the church to which this letter was originally written by the Apostle Paul, given to him, obviously, by divine inspiration, uh, he was writing this to a uh, persecuted, hurting, discouraged church who needed encouragement in their walk with the Lord. Uh, in the days of the writing of this book, it wasn't anything like it is today. Socially, most of the people were slaves, uh, lived on nearly nothing, and uh, there were a lot of widows because women outlived men by far, even greater than today, and the church had to care for them. And um, uh, there were very few trained preachers for these churches. Uh, most of them had to function just with what they could within the church. The Bible was not yet completed, uh, and the Roman Empire was persecuting the church. Many of those people, when they turned to Christ, their families put them out, divorced them. Uh, they lost their job. The church family became their home. Uh, it was a time when God's people, more than... Uh, God's people always need encouragement, but uh, in that time, that was doubly true. And that pretty much sums up the need for chapter number 8. Uh, remember uh, Paul in another verse in this book, in chapter 15, verse 4, he says, Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort, of the scriptures might have hope. So this is written to encourage us. Uh, here we have the love of God, we have grace, we have salvation in Christ, we have our sufficiency in Christ, we have our needs met, we have eternal security, and we have our coming glory promised. In a nutshell, it is a chapter of victory now and forever. Amen. Now, the Apostle Paul, writing to another church, says that uh, uh, we go through trials and tribulations, but the Lord is with us and He will bring them to us. That's a good description of life. But then he talks of the future, the then, the future glory when we shall be forever with the Lord and uh, rejoicing and enjoying the new world order. So uh, this was written to encourage them. Now all of that is summed up in uh, verse number 31 to the end of the chapter, verse number 39. It is a crescendo of praise. It is a holy triumph of victory and I want you to look at it that way this morning now, verse number 31 what shall we then say to these things what things everything that's gone before our pathetic situation before we became, became Christians uh, what the Lord has done for us his love his care his awesomeness, uh, picking us up and making us his children, whatsoever uh, uh, was before. Uh, what shall we then say to these things? Paul says, if God before us, 
who can be against us? First of all, with what God has done for us, how can He not be for us? Amen. How can He not be for us? How can we ever doubt God? How can we ever question God? If God be for us, and He is, and by the way, uh, the Greek coin Greek in which that was written, it says, since God is for us. There's no if about it. God is for His children. Amen. And then secondly, uh, who can be against us? And the rest of this chapter lists all kinds of things, externally and internally, uh, in this world, above this world, under this world, you're going to find out there's nothing that can get against us since God is for us. So there's this holy triumph. And then he breaks it down. First of all, in verse number 2, all our needs are supplied. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely yes. give us all things? Yes. He argues from the greater to the lesser. What more? What's the greatest thing that God to do but to send his own son from heaven to this earth to die for sinners and save us. Since he did that, since that was within his power, there isn't anything possible that could come into your life but that God can handle it. Amen. 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 What shall we then say to these things? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he then not with him also freely give us all things now. That's not a blank check. You can't just take this verse out of the Bible and demand of God, give me a, uh, give me a, I don't know, you name it. Now this assumes what the rest of the chapter said. Number one, it assumes you're a Christian. Number two, it assumes you're living like a Christian. Number uh, three, you're obedient to the Word of God. And you're loving God and you're loving God's people. But if you're, if you're committed, God will open the windows of heaven for you. He that spurred not his own son, but to live him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And the answer is, yes, he will. Amen. And I want you to notice, number three, we are clear of any judgment of any condemnation from anybody in heaven, on earth, or under earth. Look at verse number 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? The answer is nobody. Why? Because God has justified us. God has declared us righteous. And nothing on earth, under the earth, or in heaven can ever undo what God has declared righteous. Amen. Verse number 34. Who is he that condemneth? The answer, nobody. Right. Nobody. Amen. Not the devil. He can appear before God all he wants to throw all the rocks at us he wants to. You cannot undo the righteousness the God. that God has Thank given us. Jesus. Who is he that condemneth? Christ that died here, rather, that is risen again. You know what that risen again is? That's the seal. That's the seal. Yeah. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. You see, no accusation against us can stand. It is Christ. It is the blood of Christ. It is the word of Christ. It is the power of Christ. It is the prayers of Christ Amen. that are for us. Therefore, nothing can be against Glory us. To God. And then Jesus. you have here, as you have in many other places, the great subject dearly loved by God's people for all ages, eternal security. 
Verse number five. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Here is a challenge to our enemies. Here is a promise that nothing can separate us from God. Amen. Here is a promise that we are not only conquerors, but more than conquerors. Verse number 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? You see, this is written in the style of a lawyer in a courtroom representing us to the bar to determine if we're going to go to heaven. And the defense is unmistakable. I, says God, give unto them eternal life. Yeah. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Glory There's a challenge. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died here, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes the intercession for us. You see, every time you sin, Satan shows up and he says to God, See, look, 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 is he really one of yours? Is he really one of yours? But Jesus is right there and he's saying, Father, it's okay, he's mine. Yeah. He's praying for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Again, a question. Nothing. And then in verse number five, we have some outward situations that you would think, and some denominations even preach, would separate us from Christ, and you could lose your salvation. Look, if what God gave you, you can't lose it. If you got it from somebody else, somewhere else, yeah, you can lose it. Actually, you can't lose what you never had. Yeah. Amen. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation? Trouble? No. Nope. Absolutely not. Distress? Distress is a Greek, it comes from a Greek word that means to press together. To hold something or someone so close, so tight, till they can't escape. That's a picture sometimes of our troubles, isn't it? Sometimes you wake up and you got a problem that presses on you, distress, so tight, you see no way of escape. God does. Yeah, amen. God does. I can do all things through Christ. Which strengthens me. God does. Or persecution. We do not know anything about physical persecution. I think we know a lot. If you're if you're a Christian, a, a believer, and you are living for the Lord, you know about emotional and mental persecution. You know being shunned. You know uh, when you go to a family situation and you're the only Christian there, uh, you can feel the stress. But so far God has, Amer has spared America from physical persecution. Now yeah, I will say it is beginning. There are people in jail in America for taking a stand. There are rulers in America now so wicked that they're anti little antichrists. The folks of God has been so good to us. Why so good to us? Because he wants to. Because he wants to. Well, we're Americans, we deserve it. Are you kidding? Don't go there. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's the grace of God. Yes. Grace saves, grace keeps, and only grace will get you there. Yeah. Persecution. <coughs> Famine. Well, now there's something else we don't know. I suppose most of us in the home, there's plenty of food in the fridge. You're going to go to a restaurant. 
we are not a society that has had to much do without. Now, our older generation, we've had to work very, very hard for what we have, unlike the younger generation, but uh, God has blessed America yes, physically beyond imagination. Amen. And the nakedness, oh my goodness. Man, you, most people have clothes that they'll never wear. Some people could change clothes every day for the next 30 days. I mean, you've always got something to wear. The problem is you don't like what you got. The problem is you like what's at the store better than what's in your closet. Come on. Let's tell it like it is. But folks, we're well clothed. Or Carol. Man, we've been killed marvelously. Amen. Yes, we have. And sword. We have been spared. We have a major catastrophe on 9-11. We've had a Spanish-American war. We've had a civil war. But so far, our shores have been protected. We are blessed with a military force. Folks with all our problems, we're still being kept safe. Amen. Thank you. Every once in a while, some individual gets through and blows something up. But, and the news media makes a big deal out of that. But they never mention about the 20 and 30 or more times that they have short-circuited a violent attack from abroad. Who do you think's doing that? God. Outside circumstances, we are blessed. I've always marveled at this church. We're sitting within 10 feet of a major road. We have uh, uh, 10,000 services or more cars a day that go by here. You cannot believe the godlessness that goes on around this church. You wouldn't believe it. You cannot believe the godlessness that goes down this road. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe the homeless folks that circle us every day looking for stuff. We've never had a rock thrown through one of our lives. <coughs> the angel of the Lord camp us yes. around us in the fear him. Oh, that safety is of the Lord. And folks, we are marvelously kept. Now, we are in the enemy's camp. Look at verse number 36. As it is written, that's Psalms 44, 22. For thy sake we're killed all the, law, all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Folks, once you get saved, you're in the enemy's camp. This is the devil's place, and the devil's crowd runs this whole world. And we're in the enemy's camp, but we're kept. Most of us will live out a full life. Yes. Can you believe what's going on on the American highways now? Now, y'all drive cars, and you just kind of go this way, this way. I've got a school bus, and I'm, I'm way up here. I can see what they're doing. I can see what they're doing. I can see what they're doing. There's a college kid eating. There's a woman combing her hair, and there's a girl texting. It's a miracle anybody gets back home every day. It's a miracle. <laughs> We're kept. Every time you get in your car to go somewhere, do you pray to the Lord, keep me safe? Well, you ought to be. Huh? Yes, we must through tribulation go into the kingdom of God. Yes, they that will live God in Christ Jesus yes. shall suffer persecution. But you know, God will either save us in our troubles while we're here, or he'll save us out of our troubles and take us to heaven. Either way, we are kept. Amen. 
that verse 37, the conclusion, and so is verse 38 and 39. But in the list that I went through, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Because I'm so good, and I drive so safe, and I'm so educated, and I've got this. No, through Jesus Christ that loved us. We are kept by him. Remember, he's writing to a church that was starving. He's writing to the church that was being persecuted. He's writing to people that had lost their homes and their families and their jobs and they were slaves. Amen. And he's saying, God loves you and God will take care of you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Nay, in all these things we're more than conquerors for him that loved us. And now I call the next two verses the whipped cream on the cake. <laughs> Yummy. Now, when I say cake, I'm not talking gluten-free, <laughs> foamy whipped cream, tastes like shoe leather. I'm talking about old-fashioned, full of butter, full of flour, real whipped cream. Right from the can, I'm talking about the real stuff. Some of the modern descriptions of dessert is not worthy to be used as an illustration from the Bible. Amen. Some of the stuff they call dessert. Ugh. I'm talking about the real thing here. Yes. Sweet till yes. your eyeballs pop out. Amen. Anybody hungry? <laughs> now then, Paul, if I am persuaded. By the way, he didn't exactly have a very easy life, did he? He kind of got knocked around pretty good. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. First of all, I want you to notice, death does not separate you from the Lord. Hallelujah. Nor life, nothing in this life, nor angels. And by the way, here Paul doesn't mean the good ones in heaven. He means a myriad of demons. Nor principalities, evil, evil rulers on high, nor powers, nor nothing present, nothing to come. You don't have to fear the future. Amen. Nor height, nor depth. And, and just in case he missed anything, I don't think he did, and he knows he didn't. But just in case he adds, nor any <coughs> other creature Amen. shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ. Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We sing this wonderful song. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me. He bought me with his redeeming blood, precious blood. He loved me ere I knew him. All my love is due him. Amen. He plunged me to victory beneath his cleansing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing I have said, nothing I have preached out of this book since January, nothing that I have preached out of chapter 8 should scare me. Amen. Because you are kept by the love Thank of Christ. Amen. 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 Would you stand?
gracious Heavenly Father, we bow before your throne. And Lord, at this right now, we worship you, we praise you, we thank you, we love you. We glory in our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you all the glory due unto your holy name. We will be singing your praises and glorifying you in the ages to come. For what Paul has written here. Blessed be your precious, glorious, holy name. And our Father, as we leave this place in a few minutes, bless these dear people. May your grace, your mercy, your peace, your love go with them. May the ministry of the Holy Spirit comfort and direct their hearts. Lord, keep safe those who are not here. Those who should have been and could have been, I, I pray that your Spirit will speak to their hearts. Father, we praise you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Number 85. Number 85.